you guys. We are so excited about the next couple of weeks. Next week is Easter and we're really stoked about that. And make sure to join us right here at LW Online. Spread the word, you guys. It's gonna be an epic day at church. But today is gonna be awesome and we're so excited to bring you a message from Pastor Sid live from the studio here today. We're so excited because we are in person, you guys. I've been saying it every week. But we just love the new place. It's amazing at Confez 1645 Woodruff Avenue. If you haven't joined us yet, make sure to come out. You can meet us back in person Sunday, April 7th. We're so excited. And right here online for Easter, it's going to be an epic uh, service right here, you guys. Make sure to join us 2 p.m. next Sunday. It is going to be spectacular. We have lots of prizing uh, to give away. We have an Easter contest for the kids. Also for... Uh, everybody, there's a contest for you too. So make sure to tune in here. It's going to be amazing. Also, uh, we had such an amazing prayer night with Lockdown Intense, which is our incredible night for young people. And uh, I just love young people. I've been uh, the director of Revolution 457 for 20 years in the city. And uh, young people right now, uh, this is the topic right now. I read an article um, and today, and it just said that most of our youth, 30 and under in Canada, are not happy. And the name of the article was Youth Not Happy in Canada. And I read it and it, it talked about the statistics and it, it made us the, if youth uh, and their voice um, was at the top of the charts, uh, we would be 58th in line in the world uh, for one of the happiest nations. And uh, I think they only did 140. So, you know, it shows that our young people are not happy at all and so I love what we do to be able to be out this season and especially in the spring uh, be out this season with events uh, making sure that we have a facility for our young people to rebuild our skate park our venue for bands and make sure that 457 is doing everything that we can in this city uh, to lift the spirits of our young people in Canada so important stay tuned today you guys it is going to be a great day because as we build and that's the word for today is build, come on, to expand, to build, uh, to make something happen, to work together. That's what we're doing now. We're constructing, uh, we're moving forward uh, to rebuild. And I love it so much. And it also means to enlarge. And that's what we're working on right now. And we love it. We love every bit of it. And God has called us. And I love the scripture as we start the service today. And it says, without a vision, the people perish. God said that. He said, if you don't have a vision in your heart, you have, if you don't have a vision, you don't get locked into the vision, it says the people perish. And we're seeing that in our nation with our young people. We really need to press on and, and go to bat for our young people, you guys in Canada and for this city. Stay tuned, it's gonna be an epic day at church.
still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I built my life on Jesus He's there and let me down He's faithful in every season So why would he fail now? He won't
Make His face shine upon Be gracious to you The Lord turn His face toward you And give you peace Amen 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 scripture in Joel. It's so powerful. Uh, Joel chapter 2 uh, verse 28 says this. It said, God gave this promise. It's a promise. He says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. That means all people. He will pour out his spirit on. It says, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And that is the word for today. As you rebuild, you have to have a vision. You have to have a vision. If you're in ministry, if you're moving forward, if you're part of a team, if you're part of a a rebuild team like we are here at LW, then you have a vision for what God is doing and what he wants to do in the city. It's a different place to be. It's not like, you know, just going on with normal life and doing these things. But this word commitment came to me today and it's so powerful. And it says this, when you commit to something and commit to what God wants to do in your life, God will make a way. And it's such a powerful definition. It says here, the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, to be dedicated to the cause of Christ. 
uh, to rebuild the ministries. You know, after a long four years here uh, at LW and so many people had to close their doors, so many restaurants that I know and I love so much in this city are now gone. So many businesses, family businesses, uh, had to f close their doors and are continuing to struggle uh, throughout what has happened in the last four years. But I made a commitment and I, I remember praying to God and saying, this thing is not gonna shut us down. This is not gonna shut me down. It's not gonna change my focus. It's not gonna change my vision. And so, you know, keeping that vision that God has put in your heart to move forward, to see that building rebuilt. Here we are with our building at Confed. Love it, love the space, it's beautiful. We're also gonna be having another campus. You're gonna be hear, hearing about that very shortly. But having a service at 11.30 a.m., having a service online at 2 p.m., uh, we're expanding and enlarging our territory. We're super excited about what God's doing. And as we pray and as we move forward to do what God's called us to do in this city, you're gonna see the more ministries opening up here at LW, which we're really excited about. Also, if you'd like to get involved in those, you can email us, you can message us. Uh, we have City Light Street Outreach coming up in April. We're so excited to get back in the streets, you know, full force with our teams and get out there and, uh, you know, do what God calls us to do as the church. I mean, it's so powerful. The generation, you know, it needs hope and life. Um, people are needing food, you know, finances in this day and age. Uh, it's a tough time for families. So, you know, we pray for you guys. We pray for your families. We pray for you, you know, that God will give you direction. God will order your steps because that's what the word of God says. But as we come to offering today, I'm just so grateful for those who are here in our church and so supportive of the vision and the calling that God has on us as a church is so powerful, you guys. I love it so much. I love this church. It's so powerful. Uh, we were looking at some other venues this week just um, because we have so many things that are moving forward. And we stepped out on a, a very large stage this, this past week. And it was so powerful. And Pastor Sid and I were there. And as we left the building, Pastor Sid looked at me and he said, the crucifixion. He saw the crucifixion in that, in that building. And I was like, I thought of that too. How powerful is that? But you know, God has a plan here. And so as we get to offering today, we thank you guys for giving. If you haven't given before, you can give through text or the Tithely app, which is in the description. And we thank you guys for continuing to send your tithe, being faithful uh, to see everything God wants to do through us to build and rebuild. It's so powerful, you guys. We can't wait to see what God's going to do. Forgive those who sin against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Forever and ever. 
Praise God and welcome. Today we'll be looking at the shield of faith. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your word. And Father God, may your word today just fill us with hope and joy, O oh God. And Father, let our hearts receive, let our minds conceive, O oh God. Let us be a people, O oh God, that are thirsty and hungry for your word, because we want our steps, O oh God, to be ordered by you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. And what Paul is teaching us is that this very shield that protected him is for us today. How many want the shield of faith that Paul had, amen, that protected him, amen. First of all, you know, we got to look at what the shield of faith is and, uh, and what, you know, the Word of God is telling us. And so when we look at Paul's life, we immediately recognize a number of things that we have to look at. It sure wasn't a walk filled with peace and serenity, not by any means. And in no way was it a life secured against gangs and thieves and robbers and all kinds of adversity. As we look further into his word and what Paul was constantly referred to his life as surrounded by a shield of faith, we, we have to examine, you know, this, the situations that he was in and still lifted up the name of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24, from the Jews five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day. I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city in perils in wickedness, in perils in the sea, in perils amongst the false brethren, weariness and toil in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. And besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches who are weak and I am not weak. <laughs> who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation. Wow, you know, I thought that a shield protects. In spite of this shield of faith, all these things happen to Paul. And some of you are saying, what kind of shield is that? Now let's look at, this guy's got more problems than anybody I've seen in my life. <laughs> and he speaks about the shield of faith that protected him from all attacks. You know, the point is, there is for us, as there was for Paul, a shield of faith that does not keep us from infirmities. Or how about this, his exhaustive labors? You know, there is no word concerning Paul's ministry that is more pregnant with meaning than the word labor. <laughs> Excuse the pun. The Apostle Paul frequently used it as he described his own work. He said, for instance, I labor often and spoke, I labor more abundantly than you all. And this was a labor of extraordinary toil, folks. His was a labor of deep travail. It was a labor of long, exhausting work. It was a draining labor. It was a labor of sacrifice. Wow. You know, we might have thought that perhaps the protected life would have made him fruitful without pain or exhaustion or hard labor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this kind of faith did not deliver him from the labor of travail. Wow. As a matter of fact, when he compares the labor that he went through, he said, the turmoil and the travail that I have is compared to a mother that bears a child. Second, did it protect him from repeated failure? <laughs> I can almost hear the wails of sadness in the Apostle Paul as I read about this life and as he looked over the ruined hopes concerning the churches that he built. 
or the backslidden brethren that he won to Jesus Christ. Painful. Let me read some of the statements that Paul made about this. He said, are you soon falling away? And he was speaking to the church. You would have given your eye for me, but now, do you hear the hurt in Paul? Do you hear the sadness in his voice? He goes on to say, I hear there is strife amongst you. And he says again, it is reported that there is uncleanliness amongst you. Sexual immorality. Wow. And then some of the saddest words in all the Bible. Demas, his closest friend, forsaken me. Demas was one of his disciples that he trusted and loved. Demas had forsaken him and walked out of his life. Folks, as you read through the account of Paul's labor, it was a wail after wail, failure after failure, defeat piled upon defeat, and yet his life is declared to be a protected life. But it was perfectly clear that the shield of faith did not guard him from the agony of defeat. And how many still want to take up the shield of faith? Well, praise God. Yet he spent his life recommending to his fellow men that they get the protection of the shield of faith even though his own life was totally burdened, full of rejection, crippled with infirmity, plundered with defeat. Can this life be declared and said to be wearing a shield, a shield of faith? Actually, we've only looked at Paul's environment and the outward Paul physical Paul. We've been looking at his bodily infirmities. We've been looking at his activities of labor. We've been looking at external defeats. We haven't come close yet to the realm for which the Apostle Paul would define and describe his life. Not even close. You see, when the Apostle Paul spoke of his life, he means the life of the soul or the realm of the heart. And we view life from the outside in, but when Paul looked at his life and the shield of faith, he looked from the inside out. And when he refers to a life, his eyes are on the soul. All the value that he makes of life, he fixes upon his soul, his heart. What should it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul, Paul says. And the question of success or failure is judged by him in the courtroom of the soul. And Paul refused to focus on life's circumstances, and no way would he use them as a measuring rod for his ministry. Nor can you get him to look at the court of possessions. You can't get him to evaluate on the ups and downs of life. You can only get him to look upon the heart, the soul of man, our soul. <laughs> You never find him moved or swayed by the wealth or poverty that surrounded him. But everywhere and always with endless fascination, he watches the growth or decay of the soul. When this man speaks of the shield of faith, you can be sure that he is fixed on the soul. He is speaking of the protection that will defend the innermost being of life from the wicked and destructive invaders that will attack us and continue to attack us. By contrast, our emphasis is prone to be entirely quite reverse. And so we are apt to misunderstand this teaching of the Apostle Paul and therefore misunderstand and never experience the promises of God found in His Holy Word. You see, we are so often living in the incidents of life rather than in the essentials of life. That's right the areas of the heart. The consequences is that we seek our own shield, looking for protection from our circumstances, rather one that would shield our soul, our heart. We want a shield against sorrow to keep it away. We want a shield against loss to keep it away. We want a shield against strained relationships with those that we love to keep it away. We want a shield against sorrow to keep it away. <laughs> Yes, we want a shield against pain to keep it away. We want a shield against difficult circumstances. We want a shield to keep all things painfully away from us. In other words, we want a shield that makes us comfortable. 
But God didn't give us this shield to make us comfortable, folks. He knows the dangers that lurk in the comfort zone of our lives. It was the psalmist who said, I shall not be happy until I awaken in your likeness. You see, God knows that comfortable people are not progressive people. (laughs) We know that comfortable people are not overcoming people because comfortable people are not growing people. It's like the eagle who has beautiful little eaglets, but they won't learn how to fly until the eagle finally gets rid of the soft downy feathers in the nest. And underneath those feathers, she has placed rocks and thorns and thistles to make it uncomfortable for those little eaglets. For she knows that the time will come that they must learn to fly on their own. Even then, they won't get out and fly. So she puts them on her back and she flies up high into the sky. And suddenly she tips her wings and off the little eaglets slide. And as they spiral downwards towards the ground below, it seems that surely they're going to die. Then like a giant aircraft carrier, the mother eagle with her eight foot wingspan provides a landing pad as if to say, as upon eagle's wings, the everlasting wings powerful illustration. But that's not the end of the eaglets. (laughs) The sudden rescue still has them too comfortable. They have to fly on their own or be doomed. And so she goes up again and drops them each time from higher and higher and finally those little wings get working. If the mother had left them comfortable in their nest, they would have become a bunch of big fat buzzards (laughs) with big bodies and little wings. That just couldn't get them out of their comfortable nest. (laughs) And in the comfort, they would perish. Oh, that the body of Christ, folks, would be shaken out of the comfort zone. Can you say amen? Almost always in Scripture, the church grew and had revival when they were in their greatest time of need. When what Paul is telling us that because the shield of faith does not protect us from discomfort, We are often stunned and confused. Our minds become, you know, questioning and twisted. And suddenly we become depressed and we say, God has forsaken me. Where is God? God, are you there? Now disillusioned. Now it's right here that our false emphasis leads us astray, folks. You see, we live in circumstances. We seek the shield in an effort to remove ourselves from the circumstances rather than protect ourselves in the circumstances. Can you say, man, wow. But Paul lived and he sought the shield of faith to make him holy, not comfortable. And that's right, to make him holy, not comfortable. You see, he dwelt upon the soul. He was not concerned with the arrangements of his circumstances. He was more deeply concerned with the selfish ambition and aspirations to be released from the discomfort of the circumstance. Wow, praise God. Paul knew that regardless of those circumstances, they must never, never bring disaster upon his soul, his heart. He never sought a shield to keep out the ill-fated circumstances, but he sought a shield to keep circumstances from doing him harm. Wow. You see, Paul wanted a shield against failure, that he might not stray away. He wanted a shield against negative thinking that is born out of failure. I want to make it clear, he did not want a shield against failure itself, but he wanted a shield against the lies that are born out of failure, folks. You see, the failure doesn't hurt you. But it's the doubt, the lies, that will destroy you. Paul wanted a shield not from injury, but against the deadly things that are born from injury, especially the most wicked, that of revenge. (laughs) Injury doesn't hurt you. You can heal. A revengeful spirit, though, is what he wanted a shield from. Paul wanted a shield not from his pain, because the pain oftentimes 
great things and out of it are born and accomplished. But he sought a shield against the spirit of murmuring, which is frequently born from pain, the complaining spirit. Paul wanted the shield, not against disappointments, but against bitterness that is born out of disappointment. Paul wanted a shield not against difficulty, but against the fear that is born out of difficulty. Can you hear the Lord speaking? Paul did not want a shield against success, but against pride that is often born out of success. He didn't want a shield against wealth because he knows wealth can be so wonderful and such a blessing like success, but he wanted a shield against materialism that is often born out of wealth and not even giving out of the wealth. The Apostle Paul did not want a shield against circumstances, but a shield that would protect him in every circumstance. And his shield was his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Such a relationship with our God will literally protect us within an invisible shield. And even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me, the Bible says. Did you know that if you just let God fight your battles and you take the shield of faith and you believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and you live your life in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though bruised and battle weary, you win. Praise God. Let's give our God praise. Amen. God bless you. Well, praise God. You know, Paul's life is meant uh, to be a pattern of how the shield of faith quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. The enemy only gets in when he can attack your soul. And the mind is in the realm of the soul. The heart is in the realm of the soul. And so Paul's solution, Paul's answer, is knowing that the enemy can only attack when we allow our soul or our thinking to get to the place where we want to give up, we want to quit. And so the pattern that Paul is laying down, regardless whether it's entrepreneurship or whether it's a workplace or whether you're growing you know, in a trade or in a creative you know, opportunity, um, God's Word can rise up in you and allow you not to let the, the pain <laughs> you know, of the work, you know, impede the vision that you have for what it is, you know, you're living your dream for, you know, what it is, the goal that you set. And of course, you know, our, our goal as Christians, you know, is, is to be set on, you know, seeing the lost saved and seeing the, the poor taken care of and see the prisoners set free. But we also have a personal life for God, and that God would say, use the same principle in your personal life, in your growth, in your business, in your opportunities, that don't let the weariness, don't let the hard work, don't let the, the pain 
of what you need to endure to accomplish the end result. And that's the power of the shield of faith, that you will not bend then and start making, and this is the definition of the shield of faith, folks, that we don't make decisions based on how we feel. And we don't let our feelings interfere with the way we're thinking. Because if you do, then the dream will fade. But it'll always haunt you. I didn't do it. It starts, you know, start feeling disillusioned. Well, I'm just a failure, or I just can't do it. And God is saying, no, all things are possible when you look to Him and you let that fire burn within you. Because, you know, when God gives you a dream, He's given it to you so you can fulfill it. Not give up on it. Not give up in it. But per to continue to pursue it, regardless of the struggles you have to go through. And that can be a relationship. That can, be, that can be your marriage, where you had the dreams and the visions and it's certainly, you know, suddenly after a few years it begins to fade and it becomes, you know, mundane and routine. And God is saying, no, the fire you put in your heart for each other and the dreams that you built together, uh, fan that flame. And that's what this scripture is telling us. Fan the flame of the power, you know, of the shield of faith that'll overcome the weariness overcome the dullness, <laughs> overcome the pain and, and, and the circumstances that will try to impede you. Because if you do and you quit and you give up, whatever the dream is, whatever the goal you set is, you give up on it, that's giving the devil a foothold. He gets into your mind and first thing you know, you're a wreck, <laughs> a total wreck. You can't see how you can ever continue on. And that's where the devil gets you and you begin to run away. And as we've already looked at, the devil can only attack from the back, right? You face him dead on and he has to flee. So praise God, you know, if you're watching and you know, you've been wondering why, you know, things are not going well in my marriage, things are not going well in my job, things are not going well in my personal life, take a look at whether you're using the shield of faith to allow you to overcome the disappointments, the disillusionment, you know, the struggles, the battles with, within whatever it is that's causing you, you know, to lose the hope and to lose the vision and to give up and watch what God will do. But as the scriptures are clear, you got to do it. As scriptures say, you got to put on the armor of God. Put on the relation, that's referring to put on the relationship with Jesus Christ and allow the gifts that reside within you to rise up against the things that try to cause you to fail and give up and turn your, you know, turn your mind over, you know, negative things, you know, angry things. No, that's the work now of the devil. And it's time to repent and change your stinking thinking and change your thinking and say, no, God gave it to me. I will continue to pursue it regardless of what I have to face. Whatever it takes, I will accomplish it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And if you're watching and you don't know Jesus personally, but you're hearing things and you're saying, I, I've never heard, you know, explanations or have never never understood scripture or have never you know even read the bible but you're knowing that jesus is something and someone actually that you want in your life because you've seen the power of having a relationship with jesus in the lives of others and in the word of god and in the hearing of the word of god and i want that relationship and it's a matter of repentance again, changing your thinking faculty, you know, and recognizing, uh, you know, that life sucks, basically. But here's an opportunity where life can be a joy, a challenge. You know, people are looking for something that's real. People are looking for something that's absolute, not cost tossing you to and fro. Everybody's got an opinion. All these opinions, you know, they drive you nuts. But with God, it's absolute. It's one way. And it's stability. It's strength. 
it's being like iron, immovable, because you're operating out of a truth that does not waver, and the truth of God's promises for you. And it's a matter of saying, oh God, forgive me, <laughs> but right now, I want Jesus in my life as Savior. I want Jesus in my life as Lord of my life to lead me out of the darkness I'm in, the confusion I'm in, and into a life that has a goal for me, a purpose for me that I can fulfill in a life with Christ. Jesus, thank you. Take over my life. I pray in your name. Amen. God bless you if that's you. I always encourage people who just are new to the faith to get a Bible, not an app. An app, it's, you know, you can use on the go, but a Bible you can sit down with and you can leaf through the pages of the Bible, finding out who God really is in your life now and who Jesus is in your life and what they've done so that you can now have a life that's focused on the positive, focused on the absolute truth of God's Word. Praise God. He loves you so much. And God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now. Well, guys, thanks again for joining us this Sunday. We're so excited to see you at LW Online, 2 p.m. every Sunday, you guys. And you can watch on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube. And also follow us on Instagram and X, you guys. Uh, all of our socials, we thank you for joining us. And remember, Easter Sunday, next week, right here at LW Online. Lots of awesome for the whole family, you guys. It's going to be an amazing service. And remember, April 7th at Confed Live, 11.30 a.m. Don't miss it, you guys. It's going to be an amazing, amazing spring. Spring is here, and it is going to be epic at LW. Hope to see you next Sunday, you guys. Stay tuned to everything at LW Online.